Good morning, Karen. Good morning, David. Nice to be here again today. Yay. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. So today we're going to be talking about how you can save your marriage right now. And a big part of our program is uh, learning how to see ourselves as a victim. And I know we talk about that quite a bit, but we're going to do it at a little bit different angle today because in a new life centers program, we spend a lot of time helping women see how they have become victims in their marriage and how it disempowers them. So we're going to be talking about that today. So my name is David Cope. I'm a co-founder of a new life center with my partner, Peggy Litt. And I got involved in relationships after my divorce in the year 2000. I found myself realizing I didn't want to be on my deathbed, wishing that I had a loving and intimate relationship. So I spent a lot of time studying and reading books. And after a short period of time, I realized that most of everything that was in the books I had already tried and my marriage ended up in a divorce. So I knew I had to look at something different. And it finally dawned on me is that in order to have a loving and intimate relationship with another woman, I had to have a loving and intimate relationship with myself. So I've been spending the last 15 years understanding and teaching other people how to have a, a, a loving and intimate relationship with himself and what what that looks like and how do you accomplish that in your life. And we've taken that and put it into our relationship course that we teach at a new life center. And Karen is our lead teacher at a new life center and has taken the course herself. So can you share a little bit about yourself, Karen? I can. So I began training in this program and training in, in learning the concepts in my own life about four years ago. And when I came into a new life centers program and began learning this work, my marriage, although I didn't want to see it, but my marriage was really falling apart and falling apart like every other relationship I had had mm -hmm. prior to the one with my husband. And I found myself wondering why, why does this keep happening? And was very much in that, that victim mentality of this always happens to me. I always end up with the wrong guy. He never does what I need him to do for me to make me happy and, and to make the relationship go well. And this program taught me to actually flip that narrative and flip that story around on myself. So I could see that I was the problem in all my relationships, that I was the one causing them to fail, not to beat myself up, but so that I could actually change and have a place to put a foot forward. Um, and by doing that, I began to turn my marriage around and I am still, I'm happily married now to my husband and can say that and just continue to work on myself and learn how to have a relationship with me so that I can continue to show up in my marriage in a way that's very rewarding and very fulfilling. And I teach other women to do that every single day. So I'm very passionate um, about our program because it completely changed my life. And I watch it completely change other women's lives every single day. Um, and it's the most reporting, rewarding part of my life. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Can you share some of the principles that we have in our Facebook group that is the foundation of our teachings and in our uh, relationship course that we have? I can, and these three principles can really help you get the most um, out of our group and really understand the angle that we're coming from and how to empower yourself to really, really change. So our first principle that sets the framework for our Facebook group and for our course is that you are responsible for your happiness, that there's no one and no thing outside of you that can ever make you happy, that happiness is an inside job and we have to learn how to do that. Um, no one's ever taught us how to find our happiness within. And that's one of the things that we teach you how to do. And our second principle is that you are the only one that you can change. And I think we all know that at some level that 
we can't change anybody else and no one can change us for us that we have to be willing to roll up our sleeves and go within and then take the steps in our life to see the change that we want or take the steps in our marriage to see the change that we want. And the third principle for our group and our course is that authentic intimacy is having a relationship with yourself and feeling good about who you are. And in order to do that, we have to look at how we're lacking in a relationship with ourselves and look at how we feel bad about ourselves. And this ties into what we're gonna talk about today to be willing to explore the choices that we're making in our lives mm -hmm. that are causing us to feel bad about ourselves. And when I can see those things or when you can see those things, you can start to make new choices and see really rapid transformation. Great, thank you, Karen. You're welcome. So I, I got involved with the concept of victim after my divorce. And I've been a businessman all my life and and after and I worked hard and provided for my family. I have four children and always was there for them. And after I got divorced, I, got, I lost all my money and my, I lost my kids and my, my whole life and my and everything fell apart. But even though I was a hardworking man and had accomplished a lot in my life, I had this belief that the reason why my marriage failed was because of my wife and what had happened. And I didn't realize at that time when I was feeling that way, that that's being a victim. And I knew that if I was a victim in my life, that I was being disempowered and I couldn't change anything. And I remember saying to myself and realizing I am where I am today based upon the choices that I have made. And that was somehow that clicked in, in me at a very deep level. I am where I am today based upon the choices and decisions that I have made. And when I grasp that at a deep enough level, I could, like you said, Karen, could flip mm -hmm. it and back and look at every incident in my life that I thought somebody had done something to me. And I went back over each one of those circumstances and I could see that though, that they didn't actually do something to me, that if I was honest, that I made the choices and decisions that caused me to have those experiences. So one of the things besides losing all my money in my divorce and my family falling apart, Another big one that I had in my life was I, as a real estate developer in the 80s, I was a, a multimillionaire and had lots of things in my life. And the, in the 1980s, the real estate market collapsed and I had to put all of my money back into the business and I had a partner at the time. And for, for years, I blamed the economy that the interest rates in the late 1980s, hard to believe, were, they went up to 16, 17, 18 percent, and the, the banks weren't loaning any money. And I held on to the story that it was the economy and the interest rates that caused me to lose my money. But it, when I went back and again, I, I am where I am today based upon the choices and the decisions that I have made, empowered me to look back and said, you know, I made certain decisions that caused us to be, lose our money as a businessman because other people didn't lose all their money like I did. I didn't end up filing bankruptcy. But I was really able to go back into all the situations in my life and ask me that. And every time if I was honest, I could see that I created the circumstances that caused me to have what I thought was what somebody had done to me. And that's kind of the basis of our conversation today, Karen, is it's to take our marriage and and ask yourself the question and and real and the statement, I guess, is I am where I am today based upon the choices and decisions that I have made and look at your marriage and see the choices that you have made on a continuous basis that has created the marriage which you think you are now trapped in and have no way out. 
and want to blame your husband or your or your upbringing or something that has caused you to feel this way and you feel desperate that you can't get out when you feel like you're desperate and trapped in a marriage you're being a victim which disempowers you to make any changes because the only person you can really change is yourself and the empowering part of the statement i am where i am today based upon the choices and decisions that i have made it empowers you to look at the choices and decisions you've made that has created the marriage that you think it, it has d destroyed your life or it makes you miserable or you know how unhappy you are and you think it's the marriage of your husband but when you can break down your choices and just realize that no nobody made me get married I, I wanted to get married because of my biological clock was running or I just wanted to be, have a wedding and get married or I wanted to have children and you realize that that's you know and sometimes women we've talked about that in other videos uh, choose a man that happens to be at the right time that they want to get married and might not necessarily be the one but because it's that time in their life and and all of these things aren't to beat yourself up to make you feel wrong it's to realize that you didn't wake up one day and end up in an unhappy marriage that it, it's been a sequence and a series of choices and decisions you've made and often it's it's because we're afraid to be ourselves and be vulnerable and and to be exposed in our marriages and to be true to ourselves and we lose ourselves and become disconnected and all of those are all of those are diff, different diff, different choices that we make because we're scared to be ourselves and and to go into our marriage into life fully engaged in ourselves because we're afraid that we might be exposed which leads us into one of your clients that came into you karen kind of felt you know distraught uh, and because she woke up one day and her she was very unhappy in her marriage can you share kind of what what she came in and her issues and and what you helped her see in in the, your time you spent with her in your relationship course sure so a lot of times when my clients come in just like this woman that we're talking about today that i worked with really come in in that place of i'm terribly unhappy i don't know how to move forward and it with this particular client it's almost like it had just been building up and building up and building up this unhappiness and how trapped that she felt in her marriage and when she came in it was almost just like at a total loss of i just don't even know what to do which is exactly what we're talking about today when we're in that place of victim because of how we see our life or how we see our marriage is happening to us we feel completely out of control and have given all of our power away so we have no awareness to see mm -hmm. the choices and decisions that we've been making that have led us up to where we are and why we're unhappy in our marriage and that's where my client was david when she came in there it, it, the the story or their narrative almost always is mm -hmm. my husband this my husband that we haven't had connection in years and years and years and he's never around and the story is all on him there's no awareness of how she was showing up and and how she was creating that experience in her marriage so that was the place we had to dive into was to look, start to look at that story and and look at that narrative that she had been carrying around that was the very thing keeping her trapped and the problems that she was facing in her marriage can you share the 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 work that you did with her I can. No. So when she came in, her, her victim story was, I am lost in my marriage and my life. My life is too hard. I am always drained and struggling. I hate everything and everybody. And what we had to, what I had to help her to do is so she could get out of this story and start to see the choices and decisions she had been making or how she had been showing up 
that was causing her to be in this place mm -hmm. and, and, and to feel these things. But then she had to look at herself. And this is what we teach our clients how to do in their relationship courses, mm -hmm. how to dig in and, and see the very things that we've been doing or the choices that we've been making that have landed us exactly where we are in our marriage and in our life. And this is what she got to see about herself so that she can change this. I am lost in my marriage and my life because I refuse to give myself direction. I make my life too hard because I am afraid to live my life. I am always drained and struggling because I am holding myself back. I hate everything and everybody because they all show me what I am afraid to do for myself. Oh. I could have done that myself yeah. when I came into this. The, it's very, it's, very, it's a very common, common narrative. Yes. Yeah. And it, it, do the women feel bad after they do this work, Karen? And you would think that they're, they're pulling, shaking this all up and looking at mm -hmm. all the dark side. Do they come away feeling like they, they're, they're terrible and they're a bad person? Or what? how do they experience it after they have this revelation and clarity? Yeah. After being able to go in and see these things, you would think yeah. that a person would just feel terrible and horrible about themselves seeing these things. But it's actually the exact opposite, David. Clients often feel a sense of relief Mm. and a sense of hope mm. and they often describe it as just an opening in themselves I, I i can finally see what's going on it's almost a relief mm. because it's no longer this ambiguous experience that they don't know why it's happening where they feel trapped they can they get the clarity of i can see exactly how i've ended up here because mm. of myself and that's yeah. where the hope comes from because it's oh okay i can understand this now mm -hmm. and i can do something about this and it it is humbling to mm -hmm. see these things um but that only lasts for a couple minutes and mm -hmm. one of the things i really focus on in helping myself and my clients understand is that being a victim is a normal human experience mm -hmm. there's there's nothing wrong about who we are. We're not coming from a malicious place of, of, of putting ourselves. It's just a defense mechanism of the mind because we get scared and threatened and we're looking for a way to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's when I can see this and I can understand this part of who I am, I have a deep acceptance for myself. And from that place, that's where I can begin to move forward and live a totally new life and start to heal and show up differently in my marriage and have a different experience. Um, so it's not about beating yourself up. It's yeah. about accepting this part of you. And Karen, can you read the short nar uh, narrative that she uh, wrote after she had this awareness? Because it, it can help our listeners understand why we get into a place in our marriage where we feel hopeless and there's no way out and feel trapped and could you read that what she realized yeah. after the work yeah so her awareness after doing um, this piece of work was i live small and hide from life to protect myself from getting hurt and being exposed as a fraud i do not want to achieve my my potential yeah. that was the awareness yeah. So again, you would think, oh my God, that's a horrible thing about myself. I I, I don't want to know that. But it's actually you know, when you work within the program and follow the process, it be, as Karen says, it becomes um, it's like shining the light in a dark place, and all of a sudden you can see something you could never see before, and it opens you up to a whole new world of possibilities. So this woman can realize, no, the reason why I am struggling in my marriage isn't because of my husband and all the things that I want to blame it on. It's because I'm hiding and playing small and I'm scared and I don't want to go out because I'm afraid to reach my potential. And who will I be and who will I, what will I have to do and what responsibilities will I have to take on? 
if I do reach my potential. So I'm hiding and I don't want to be exposed. So I'm doing as little as I possibly can, trying to pretend I'm doing a lot, but actually doing very little. And when you realize that that's what's happening, if you want to, now you can make a different choice and say, I can see how the, I, that experience of myself could create my marriage and why I think it's my husband that's actually doing it, but it's actually me playing small and hiding within myself. And in our relationship class, we have a structured program that helps you take that information and then do something with it. What what do I do to step out and be my true self and be authentic within myself? Because certainly I can't be happy and I can't have any intimacy with myself or, or my partner if I'm hiding and playing small and I'm scared in my life, which as Karen said earlier, which is very normal. Being a victim and these things that come up are very common in, in all of us as humans. But it's a, it can be very empowering when you're freed from the burdens of, of what you've been hiding from internally and allow yourself to be engaged in the process of finding your true self and, and engaging in life at a whole new level. It's the, I often say the, the benefits and the result of shining the light, like David said, shining the light on these dark places far exceeds hmm. and far outweighs the discomfort, the initial discomfort of going there. Yeah. And then once I, I've done that a couple of times for myself and I understand that process and where it leads, there's almost a, 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 an excitement or a motivation mm, of it is. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going because this is working so well and I'm having a brand new experience of myself and my life and my marriage. Like I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and, and look at those places I've been hiding from because I want to continue to change and, and, and grow and, and feel good. When I've got all of this victim story going on, I can't feel good about myself no. or my life. And I just get stuck in that. And there are plenty of people who are going to reinforce that that story and, right, and play sure. into that and say, poor you, oh my gosh, that's yeah. so hard. There's about 1% of people that are going to be really supportive and say, I can understand that. Now, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, that's and, right. and so that's how we, we just get so stuck in that story. Um, and we can't feel good about ourselves there. So getting in there is, it sounds counterintuitive, but that's how we get to a place of actually feeling good. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Of course. So if you can imagine that your life is like a canvas mm. and all your life you you've been painting a picture on this blank canvas mm. and what you have been painting is the life that you have now the empowering part of this by realizing i am where i am today based upon the choice and decisions that i have made and the realization that you have a choice of being either being a, a victim of your circumstances or the product of your choices. What that means, if you are willing to, to recognize that you are the product of your choices, that can empower you today to start with a clean, brand new canvas which means if I have made choices that created the life that I have now, then I can make new choices starting today that's going to create a brand new experience of myself if I make a different set of choices and have a new canvas, regardless of the life that you have, the marriage of you that you have, you can create a whole set of new choices that create a new reality that brings you into a place, not only within yourself, within your marriage and your life, a, a whole new opportunity to free yourself of what you think you're trapped and burdened by and open up a life of, full of possibilities where you can not be limited by your past and what you your circumstances are. Carrie, can you share some of the most common circumstances that we run, that you run into with your women clients? And as you're listening to these, I I hope you can see 
when we live and blame our circumstances, meaning I am a victim to my circumstances, the reason why I am where I am today is because of my circumstances and how I was brought up. You create the life that you have. You create a life that you feel trapped and miserable and unhappy in, thinking that it's the outside world or your life that has caused it, that somehow life is doing this to me. But when you take those same circumstances and you use them to empower you to become more and to find the strength that you had to, to overcome those circumstances, you, you empower yourself to be a heroine of your life, to say, okay, in spite of the circumstances, what am I going to choose and who am I going to become and what type of life am I going to create? if I am a product of my choices. Can, so can you list the, the circumstances that are, women come in to see you often and share this? Yeah, so what I have um, to share are, are the stories that a lot of my clients come in with. Some of these are stories that I've carried around in, in my own life. And I think with what David's saying, I know for me and I know for the clients that I work with, we don't even realize that we have a choice in whether we're going to carry the, those stories forward or not, or if we're going to live in, in what's happened to us in our life and what we've experienced. There's, there's just not even an awareness that we don't have to carry that forward. We actually have the power to let it go and create, like David said, create a whole new canvas that doesn't even include those past experiences or life experiences that we're using now to limit ourselves. Beautiful. So a really common one um, that comes up a lot in the work that I do with my clients is if they're struggling in their marriage, they might be holding on to the story or the fact that their parents got divorced when they were young and that they never, they never learned how to have a happy marriage because their parents got divorced. And that's the thing that continues to get in their way. I recently worked with a client who this was her story of why 25, 30 years into her marriage, she continued to be so unhappy because she had all of this pain from her parents' divorce. And it, it was fascinating to watch her share that story and how much pain was still so visceral in her from this experience in her life. And she's doing the work now to let that go so that she can create a whole new experience and not have that, that past um, life hardship getting in the way of her marriage now. So that's a really common one, David. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to tie in with this, the way to reevaluate your circumstances and your upbringing and what I did for myself is are there other people mm. who've had a similar circumstance that have created a life of opportunity and and freedom and success and if there's even one person and of course there's always hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people who had the same circumstances that each of you had growing up that have taken those circumstances and empowered them to learn and grow rather than limited them. So again, what I say, if there, if I can find other people with the same circumstances that I have that have led an empowered life of creativity, of creating themselves and success, then it, all that is is an excuse that I'm holding on. So like the woman that came to you, I can play small and hide and I don't have to take risks and step out in life. And it's a perfect excuse in, in a marriage as well. Yeah. And what's okay. another one you have, Karen? Another one I have is someone who has maybe an autoimmune disorder, either you know fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, or they have some sort of chronic illness. And this is this has come up a couple of times with people that I have worked with or women that I have worked with. And because of their autoimmune disorder or because of their chronic illness, they can't lose weight. And so they're stuck in their story of, of yes, that it, it might be true that, that they're sick and they, they have um, a disease going on with them. 
And yet they hide behind that as an excuse of why they can't step into their marriage and, and change things or step into their lives and have a normal life or a life that lots of other people have. And that can really stand in the way. So I worked with a client who really struggles to lose weight because of her autoimmune disorder. And she is constantly focused on that and constantly focused on needing to lose weight. And then she uses that as, as the story against her husband. He doesn't understand me. He doesn't get how hard this is for me. And that becomes the very issue that she uses to push him away with. Right. Thank you. And at a new life center, one thing we do other than relationship courses is that we teach people how to heal themselves from chronic illnesses. And though chronic illness like fibromyalgia or an autoimmune disease, autoimmune disease can be very debilitating. Mm -hmm. I had an autoimmune disorder, chronic fatigue syndrome, which was caused by my divorce, which led me into a lot of the work I'm doing because I got very sick and was able to teach myself how to heal myself. Over the last 15 years, we realized that often people create illnesses at some unconscious level as a way to play hide and small and to have an excuse in life. And often we run into when people come into our, our programs with chronic illness that when they realize that they can outgrow their chronic illness, it's often very difficult because they've used it for so many years as an excuse to hide from and a convenient excuse anytime they want something. I know that sometimes it sounds cold and callous, but it, it was not. It's not meant to be judgmental. We just realized, working with individuals over 15 years, that we create illnesses to play hide and small. Mm -hmm. Just like that lady said in her statement that came to you is, I I hide and play small, and illnesses is a wonderful way. So it, the the understanding here is is that that we can make different choices. Even if we have an autoimmune disorder, we don't need to let it get in the way of having a healthy relationship with, with, with our partner. We can make different choices that allow ourselves to um, uh, be engaged in our marriage so that we can uh, have a, a happy and relationship in spite of our illness. Because again, if somebody has a chronic illness, and can have a happy marriage, then that's what we want to look for, not to find all the people who are sick and don't have a happy marriage. So thank you, Karen. Then what's another one that you have? Another one that's really common um, that we, we often get trapped in the story of is if we were sexually abused growing up, um, that we can use that as, yes, that might be true, and, and we might have gone through that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm still using that 20, 30 years later of why I can't have a healthy marriage, then I'm really going to bury myself under that and make it really impossible to have a different experience. So we have to find a way to be able to heal from right. something like that and let that story go. Yeah. So I, I know that's a tender subject for a, a lot of people. Uh, and, oh, you don't understand what happened to me. And 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 yes it's difficult to understand though i was sexually abused when i was a, a young boy mm -hmm. and i was able to do the work and heal myself so that i didn't have that as something that i wanted to hold on to and limit myself and the, again the, the way to understand each of these circumstances is are there other people that have had the similar circumstances in my and have used that to, to, to propel them into a life, to, to create a, a more powerful and creative life, or do they use it to limit themselves to, to play small? And that's what we're trying to say is to, it doesn't matter what circumstance that you say you have, that if you can find other people with similar circumstances, I often use Oprah Winfrey life story as an example of hardships. You know, sometimes we say, oh my gosh, you don't know how horrible my upbringing is. But when you see somebody with Oprah Winfrey's upbringing and what she did to, to use it to empower herself, um, it's hard to, it's hard to, um, ha 
have people say you don't understand my upbringing uh, and of course it's all of us trying to use our upbringing as an excuse for why we can't do something or have the life that we think we should have karen yeah. can you give another one sure another Maybe. one is my father my mother or father growing up was an alcoholic or abusive that's yeah. another one that that's unfortunately and another tender subject it's one that's very common for people in life and again just reinforcing what we're already saying is 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 we have the ability and the capacity as adults to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Am I going to continue to use that as the reason why I can't get ahead, why I can't have the marriage everyone else has, or, or why I can't be the best that I can be? Or like David said, or am I going to use that to empower myself and propel myself forward in life? Mm -hmm. And if we don't make a choice, this is, this is kind of the tough pull to swallow or, um, kind of the kicker is if I don't make a choice, I automatically fall into that place of victim and hiding underneath my story. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. So can we kind of do a, um, a wrap up of, of what we, the message we had today It's the title of mm -hmm. our talk was how you can save your marriage right now. Sure. So what so, is our message that we're trying to communicate to our listeners? Yeah. Very simply, simply put, although not easy to do, which is why we're here to help you through this process, is to recognize that where you are in your marriage, the problems that you're facing, the unhappiness that you're experiencing didn't just happen to you. If you're able to slow down and really look and get really honest with yourself, you're going to be able to see that you're exactly where you are in your marriage because of the choices that you have been making that you haven't been aware of. And the reason that we teach that and the reason we help women to see the choices and to recognize how they've been victims in their marriage isn't again not to beat ourselves up or get down on ourselves but the exact opposite because when i can see that i am where i am in my marriage because of my choices and decisions then i am empowered to change and have a completely different marriage and change the problems and find resolution and move forward and grow and learn from them. So that's that's really simply put our message today that if you can start to see you are where you are in your marriage because of you and the choices and decisions you've been making that you haven't been able to see, then that's a really good thing because that means you have a chance now to really change and create the marriage that you always wanted. Because if you've been making choices that have led to you being in an unhappy marriage mm -hmm. and you're able to see that, mm -hmm. think about the choices and the new choices you can meet, make to create a really amazing marriage. That like it can go either way. You don't have to be stuck or trapped in where you are. Thank you, Karen. That, and that's why our our relationship course that we offer is is really different than anything else that you'll find out there because we re recognize that most things you read in a book and uh, marriage counseling deal with more surface issues mm -hmm. and techniques and strategies like better communication or understanding each other's needs or understanding each other's love language. But if you realize that fundamentally, if you are unhappy, those things don't deal with what is causing you to be unhappy in your marriage often women come to us and say you know i i have this facade that i'm happy and mm -hmm. everybody thinks i am but deep inside i'm miserable and i'm very unhappy so if you realize that in order to change the experience of your marriage and your life you have to change the experience of yourself at a fundamental level that allows you to go from feeling unhappy and miserable within yourself to feeling good and empowered. And that's the, the essence of our relationship course, which makes it so transformational and so powerful in just uh, eight to 10 weeks, uh, because the, the concepts we deal are, are dealt at a very fundamental level. It is. So, and yeah, if, if you're ready to explore, or maybe have been sitting back for a little bit wondering, I don't know if this will work for me or not, send me a private message so that we can set up a free breakthrough session and we will get on a video call together for an hour 
and dive into the issues and challenges that you're experiencing in your marriage. And I'll help you look at some of the choices that you've been making that you haven't been able to see mm -hmm. that have gotten you to where you are in your marriage. And if it feels like we're a good fit to work together, then we can talk about the relationship course and what that would look like for you. And like David said, it is only eight to 10 weeks to get the tools and to learn the skill set mm -hmm. to have a relationship with yourself, to feel good about yourself so that you can then bring that into your marriage and have the relationship that you always dreamed of. That's what we teach women how to do every single day. And if you're ready to explore that, just shoot me a private message on Facebook and we'll get something set up. And I would really love to talk with you. Well, thank you so much for sharing this today, Karen. It's always Thanks. a pleasure sharing it with you. Thank you. At A New Life Center, all of our teachers are true teachers because each of us practice in our life, in our relationships and marriages, the, the things that we teach the people that come to our program. And it's very critical at a new life center that everybody is a true teacher. And certainly is, it's exciting to share this with, with you, Karen, knowing that you're doing the very things that you're talking about in your marriage and, and it's changing your life. And so thank you everybody for listening again. And I hope you, each of you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. -bye.